All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about my Arcade 1-Up Galaga cabinet that I put uh, Raspberry Pi 4 in. So it's going to be a Galaga Pi 4 mod. I know I did a uh, TMNT cabinet Pi 4 mod um, a couple months ago. You guys really liked that one. I said I had some more coming. I actually did this, the Galaga one with the Pi 4, uh, the Pac-Man one with the Pi 3. I'll get to that one in a later video. <laughs> But um, this one, I'm just going to cover, like I said, just for the most part, what I did to it. Um, just an overview for the most part. Um, if you have questions about stuff, um, just make sure to post it in the comment. I'll answer them as best as I can. And I'll also kind of give you some just um, words of advice of things maybe I had as far as troubles that I had, things you can avoid or maybe do better than I did. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. All right, so we'll start off with, like, why did I do a Pi 4 or a Pi 3? Um, obviously, you can do this with a Pi 3, and that's perfectly fine. There was just a handful of games, I think, that I was writing this with a Pi 3 initially that I upgraded to Pi 4. I think Gunbird 2, which one, what I'm showing you right now, was one of the games that really struggled um, with the Pi 3. And there was an assortment of cave uh, shooters that I wanted on here that uh, struggled or just didn't perform as well. And I just said, you know, why the heck not? I'll just go ahead and do the, the Pi 4. Um, but uh, also, as you can see up here, I got the light-up marquee. This is the official light-up marquee from Arcade 1-Up. I, you know, did the video kind of to where I talked about that um, a couple weeks ago when I first got them. And it, I know people ask in the other video, like, does it look like really... Uh, white around there like when you and i think that the camera does that a little bit but like the where the black looks a little bit whitish that's just kind of like the light coming through and off camera it doesn't look as kind of just white as it does right there like the, the black part doesn't look as white um and down here uh you can see the this is the the kick plate uh these two graphics are the um from arcade graphics which i've talked about multiple times on this channel i think you can get these the it comes with the those two different there are two different decals right there the one the galaga one and i think this is labeled the burst one uh the burst design but both of these two graphics uh shipped i think you can get for a right around 40 if not under 40 and that's kind of the reason why i started going with our kid graphics was that their price was pretty cheap um and i just i think that i've mentioned this many times before that the kick plates and these the front kick plate decals I think are like the cheapest thing that you can do that adds the most to your cabinet as far as visually. Um, and I just like them a lot. And you can see I got it on the NBA Jam one to the right and the Pac-Man one on the left. So all the cabinets I have, I've added these to the front and I just absolutely love them. And then we'll kind of get down here a little bit and we'll look at the, uh, the light up riser. So the light up riser is, um, this is the first one that I actually got with the Galaga one. Um, and I got that from Tulsa Arcade. Here's the Pac-Man one and the NBA GM one. Those were both actually Black Friday prices. Um, this is the only one I actually paid almost full price for, which I think it's, I, I really like them. They're high quality. I just think that they're they're kind of expensive. Um, I think this one I paid close to like 130 or 140 after shipping. Um, and then you also got to buy the LED light after. And it's just, it's kind of ridiculous though. Um, for that price i think but like i said i like the quality and here i added the uh sand wall joystick i got an eight-way directional joystick um you got the uh these are actually the buttons from the tmnt like four pack that i got these were like just leftover buttons that i had that um that i used for the the red ones and the green ones those were like i said leftover from a previous project um but I just I added three buttons. I I used the original spot for the joystick and then that fire button, and I added two more, um, which I possibly could have added a couple more after after thought. I I wanted to like see if I could leave some of these graphics on here and didn't want to mess with it too much, so I thought putting three like that was was a good placement, and I didn't really want to put more. Like I said, I added went to add tubin um, recently and found out that I need you need more buttons for that, and it's just that's the one thing I've actually issue i've had as far as the game that i needed more buttons with um i got the dust protector off of ebay um it's just a little Gal galaga spaceship um i don't like that one so much because it's a little bit too high profile but it's it's okay i guess um and then i did uh polyurethane is what i did to put like a clear coat over top um you can get you can just spray clear coat and this thing was actually in really good condition until i started messing with it and taking it off and i think i set it upside down and got some scratches on it but it was like actually flawless until i went to take this apart and unfortunately i did get some dings and scratches on it and i used an older brush so i got some bubbles on the 
on the deck. But overall, I think it came out um, came out all right. But I, I do highly suggest a polyurethane on on your deck if you don't have a deck protector or just a kind of a spray can of clear coat. And it does give that little glimmer or shine that you glossy look. Uh, and over here, you can see I added another speaker. So the way I did that was I took a piece of paper and I just kind of laid it on top uh, and I just poked holes through where all the holes are at. And I took that piece of paper to the left side. Oh, yeah, because our right side is where all the is the, where the normal speaker, I think, was. And then I put that piece of paper over here after I poked all the holes in it. And I just kind of drove through it, you know, took a marker and kind of like just marked where all those holes were to make it come out to where the layout was the exact same. So if you're trying to do that for another speaker, that's like, I think that's like probably the easiest way to do it. Um, but we'll we'll look inside of that, uh, the deck underneath of it at uh, a little bit here. Um, as far as the screen, I did not do a screen update, a monitor update. I haven't done any of my cabinets because I, I'm actually, I don't find that it's an issue as far as the, I know some people like that. I, I haven't found it to be an issue and I would re highly recommend on the, on like a vertical cabinet like this vertical screen, not to do it. Cause I've had an issue to where like, I think a lot of times, you know, those, those screens can sit back and they're farther away, but I feel like this, the screen is like for some of the higher paced shooters is just almost moves a little bit too fast to where it's like being i feel like i'm almost too close to it at a 17 inch monitor so i think i think a 20 inch for like a vertical one would almost be like too big to where it'd feel like you're too close to really see um and here i'm just giving you like an overview um i also did the um the side decals i think got from arcade graphics i think they're black friday everything was like 50 percent off so I went ahead and added the um, the side uh, decals, and I got the matching burst one, um, and I think it came out pretty pretty good. Uh, I don't know. I probably won't do it on any of my other cabinets, but the, the Galaga one was the one that I did not uh, I did not like the the side art on the Galaga cabinet. It was really bland. So having that burst decal on the on the I got it for the the riser and for the cabinet itself, which you know I think it it adds a lot to it. Um, and we'll take a look in here in the back, and this is just uh, what ETA, what, what's his name, ETA Prime or whatever the guy's name is that does the, uh, you know, that does the mods. This is obviously pretty similar to his down here. This is the kind of cable from the light up riser, <clears throat> and here's your little board that you're going to need. Was it the, is it a, I think it's the what VD display or whatnot. I'll put a list for the description of all the parts in the in the description i'll list all the parts that i got but that's a, just a little uh, display board that everyone uses um that is the power this is the hdmi that runs to your raspberry pi this is uh, the audio cable that runs up to your amp up here that i got kind of mounted up there and then obviously here is the raspberry pi 4 and i have the power cord that comes in for the power switch um you can run that right to your your raspberry pi you can fit that on there and as well as your your fan as well so you can have your fan and that going it gets a, it's a little bit tight but we'll take the cap off and you can see i got everything wired up here to where your your fan is going and then you got the the power switch is is going there too so when you flip your <clears throat> flip your switch that everything everything goes on and off um it doesn't do every it won't do everything it won't do your obviously your light up marquee but there's a button on top that does that and that's just your usb that goes to your um your controller that's your power on the left and your hdmi hdmi from your pi to your board and like i said that's your power and that's pretty much yeah that's pretty much uh it for your pi uh but it's this yeah I could build a shelf in here. I thought about building a shelf, um, but I haven't done it yet. Um, the cords on this one are actually pretty decent to where I could run down here. The, well, I had an issue with my Pac-Man one where these cords wouldn't run down this far, and I, it's kind of just just left dangling there. Um, but you can see just where I have the, the monitor cords plugged into the board. Um, this is just the um, light-up marquee cord that I got plugged in. And we'll come up here and we'll look at the amp. Um, for the amp, I bought way too big a speaker wire, um, it's way too big of a gauge. But as you can see, I got the the on the right. You have your power for the amp. Um, that's your AC adapter for the um, your power brick for the amp. And then, like I said, the the speaker wire there. Sorry for all the shaking. Um, that goes straight to into your deck protect or under into your deck for the uh, speakers. And over here is what runs to the the board. These red and white wires is what comes over here and plugs into your board so that takes the 
uh, audio from the Pi to that board and then runs it to the amplifier. Um, and then, like I said, under here is where the cables go. That's your speaker wire that goes up underneath to your speakers. And yeah, this is just, I got a, a nice little surge protector down in here and there's just a couple power bricks. Uh, but like I said, it's nothing, nothing fancy, nothing probably you haven't seen before, but that's just kind of how I got tied together. And for this one, I went with a cheaper amplifier. Sorry for the dust over, <laughs> over here, but I went with the, like, I think this is like a 10, 10 or $15 amplifier, but the only problem is you have to buy like your cord, your power supply separately. Um, and I can get my finger down in there and just, uh, the knob on that one isn't as big as the other one, but it still works as far as adjusting the volume. Um, this is the original speaker that is just mounted on the um, cabinet. It's like I think it's like a three or three and a half inch. And you can see I basically had to solder solder the speaker wire to the speaker. Um, this is like I said, it, it's it's too big gauge. It's too big of a gauge for it. But I mean, it I got the job done. I definitely should have bought smaller gauge got wire to make it a little bit easier. But like I said, you can still solder it. Um, this right here, this little board is like the on off switch. And if you do run it to your Pi, you have to switch that board. You can unscrew it and then flip that switch around. Because if you just do it normally, you're going to off is on and off is on and on is off. So it's kind of backwards. You got to flip it around. Uh, this is like a. I bought a two pack. I think these are just little two inch, two inch speakers that I bought a two pack of for ten bucks, because I wasn't really sure how much space I was going to have in here. I didn't want to go any, any larger. Um, it was I knew it was going to be kind of tight, but it, just, it gets the job done. And this thing is plenty loud. It definitely does does the job. Um, but same thing. I just had to. It kind of sucked having the oversized speaker wire with that small speaker and having to solder it. But it in the end it, it works fine and it gets the job done and it works really good. Uh, this is the Sanwa stick that I had, uh, that I ordered off, uh, I think I just got it off of Amazon. Um, and if you don't know, like this was, uh, this right here, this gate is what you can basically, you can take this gate up and kind of twist it to make it, so all the sticks are, the joysticks are for the most part the same, but you can go from an eight-way to a four-way just by picking that little clear part up and then rotating it. And it make, and that's what I had to do for my Pac-Man one to go from an eight-way to a four-way. Uh, these are the little, little USB encoders that you basically plug the buttons into and then run that USB cord to your Raspberry Pi, and that's your controls. And like I said, these are leftover parts. Uh, I think I had to order an extra USB board, but it's for the most part, it's the same leftover buttons that I had from the TMNT cabinet. And let's get into just what I got as far as the interface and stuff. I got, uh, I think I downloaded Hersty Themes. And this is, they only have a couple vertical ones. If you know of a better vertical oriented uh, theme, uh, let me know. This one is okay. I think I have, they only have like two or three, and I have one on this one, one on that one. They're both pretty, pretty similar. Um, how I have my stuff set up is I, um, I put, if you know how like RetroPie is, you got your arcade folder, your main, uh, your main folder. And I put my main 2003 games usually in my arcade, arcade classics. That's usually, you know, my older, older type ones. Um, my main folder is like my main 2010, usually games and games that run better, main 2010. And the stuff that doesn't run on that, I'll put in Final Burn. Uh, and Final Burn actually runs a lot of the, uh, like, Esperluda um, and a bunch of other cave games like um, Don Pachi and Dodon Pachi. Uh, some of these, I think some of these ran on like... Uh, with the Pi 3, but some did not, or some struggled really hard. Like the, like I said, the, the Gunbird 2, I know, struggled really hard. There were just some games, I, I forget which exact ones, but there was definite reasons. Like, you know, you got the rating games on here. Um, and also, you can, I haven't done it yet, but I did on the last one. You can set up uh, the Dreamcast on here. You can play like Ikaruga and stuff like that if you want to. I just haven't gotten around to adding the Dreamcast to it, but we'll. Um, start with this and you can see I got the desktop version of um, RetroPie um, running. That was kind of something that tripped me up for a while because on the Raspberry Pi 4 on the partial version there's no real easy way to switch it to uh, orient this way. Um, so you have to do it. They may have it out now, but the way that you would do it, it was pretty easy. I forgot how you do it. Um, I forgive me for it, but there was like an easy way that you did it on the Pi 3. You can just go into like the, I think the configs or the BIOS or something like that and just change it. You can't do that on the Pi 4. So there's a different way you have to go around doing it. And that way is only supported on doing it on the Pi 4. 
or on, on the desktop mode, I'm sorry, on the desktop mode. And then the problem that I had was, you know, everything actually, when I set it up that way, everything ran like, ran really good. I didn't have any issues except for like Galaga. Galaga was like the one game that I did not, that I could not get to run, run good. And I was like, man, it's like, like what's the, what's the deal? I have like Galaga, I have the same ROM running on my Raspberry Pi 4 on the TMNT cabinet that it runs really good. Why well, want it run in ver and uh, and uh, with the screen set this way, the horizontal set screen, and kind of find out it was just a ROM. So I had to basically just find a different ROM, and then so if you have a similar problem, if you if you go and you uh, if you're setting up Galag on this with your Pi 4 and it's not running right, because actually on the one I have with the Pi 3, that same ROM runs fine on the Pi 3. But for whatever reason, that same ROM does not run on MAME 2003 in desktop mode. It only runs on like the partial version. I don't know. I don't know why. It's which I, I was really concerned about that for a while, and then I just finally just went and found a different ROM. We'll jump into something else. Uh, just jumped into a different different ROM. Uh, problem I was having here is so all like all these old ones, like the. Uh, yeah, we're going to Galaga now, actually. Oh, sorry. But yeah, this version of Galaga, because I was really upset, because like, I actually like Galaga a lot. It's like one of my favorite games. I actually just got this fixed uh, recently. Um, that was another reason why I didn't make the video. I'm like, man, I can't make this video on my freaking, ga I, you know, done jacked up my Galaga. Ain't nobody going to want to do this mod now. <laughs> but yeah, if you run into a similar, similar issue, it's just you got to get the right, you got to maybe find a different ROM for Galaga, and you'll be fine. And I actually think this one, um, yeah, this one actually runs really good. But the one, the, the one I had before that it ran, it just seemed like the frame weight, right, was like, was really, was really screwed up. But like I said, yeah, I just figured this out just a couple of days ago, so, um, and it seems like it runs really good. And you got ship crashing noise and everything so but I think I already had that on the sample samples in there um, I guess that's it we'll just try out what else should we try out ESP raid maybe that was one of the ones I don't know like I said I can't I can't remember the exact games that had struggled on the on the Pi 3 but I know there was definitely was definitely some of them Yeah, I don't like. I definitely don't like the desktop mode as much, but it's whatever you gotta do to get it to work. Guandi. This is actually. I know I did a video recently to where this is actually on the. Uh, I think you can get it digitally on the Xbox One. It's like a digital only title. I, I don't think that there's a I don't think that there's there's a physical version of this anywhere. If it is, it's a Japan Japan exclusive. But as you can tell it runs really runs really good. Hop out and we'll just try one more. Uh, we'll just do Dodonpachi. I don't know if that runs. That may struggle. I'm curious. I got that on both. I got it in here and on the FBI. I'm curious if I had trouble with it. No, this ain't going to run. That's 2003. At least I don't think so. Maybe it will. Goodness, that's a long morning. I like this guy. I always like the green one. Okay. 
But yeah, that's um, that's it for the most part. Um, just let me know. Go ahead and put, like I said, put in the comments if you have any questions, and I'll I'll do what I can to answer them as best as I can. Um, like I said, like for the most part, I would maybe put one more, maybe one more button just for a couple games. I mean, I was actually I thought I was actually pushing it with three buttons. I'm like, there's nothing I'm gonna need three buttons for. And for the most part, there isn't. Oh shoot! But I think it. Looking back, actually, it would not have been a bad idea since it's only like a one player cabinet to have just like that, you know, extra button or two just for specific games. But um, that, and like I said, just be wary of desktop mode, and some ROMs may run different than you anticipate. And that's it for the most part. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Like I said, just put comments down if you have any questions, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.